Hi, I'm Ron Timmermans, one of the many hosts for the Florida Aviation Network. And today we're broadcasting live and in the clear from the Aerospace Center for Excellence in La at the Lakeland Airport in Lakeland, Florida, where we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Sun and Fun Aerospace Expo. People that are interested in this event at Lakeland include pilots like you, perhaps, and me, uh, mechanics, uh, people that are just somewhat interested in aviation, leaders in education, and oh, by the way, speaking of leaders in education, I've got two of them here from the local area that are going to um, visit, with, visit with me this afternoon. First is Ms. Jennifer Sasser on my left and Brian Hughes on uh, her left. And they are each a head of program at the Central Florida Aerospace Academy. Um, Jennifer at the Kathleen Senior High School and Brian at the Winter Haven Senior High School. Did I get the titles correct this time? Yes, yes, yes I did. You did. That's very important, and I <laughs> didn't want anybody to lose their job to include me. So um, that's a that's a big mouthful. So Central Florida Aerospace Academy. That's the building that we're actually in and doing this uh, the, the interview in. It's been here for a number of years at the Sun and Fun campus, and it's a fully functioning high school. And how many students do you have at this uh, facility? It is. We are a ninth through 12th grade public high school. Uh, and we are acad an academy of Kathleen Senior, which is 12 miles away from us. Uh, but we, have, we currently have about 375 students here at the uh, Central Florida Aerospace Academy Kathleen Senior High. Wow, and Brian, uh, you're at the similar academy at Winter Haven, which is a community just not too far distant from here, what, 15 miles? Yeah, we're about 15, 20 miles from here. Uh, very, very similar situation. We are an academy of Winter Haven Senior High School. Uh, we currently serve about 230 kids uh, in our program, um, and we're about 10 or 11 miles away from the high school at, our, at Winter Haven Airport. So together we're looking at 600 students between the two schools. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's incredible. And so all of these have basic high school education. All these kids are getting a basic high school education, mm -hmm. plus the opportunity to specialize in <coughs> aspects of aviation. Is that correct? Correct. Yes, that is correct. At the, here at the Lakeland, um, at the Lakeland campus, our students actually uh, are able to do different pathways. One of those is our aviation pathway, where students are able to work towards getting their private pilot's license. Then we have another pathway where students are able to do work in avionics, another where they can begin working towards their aircraft maintenance technician program. Uh, we have engineering and we now have the uh, UAS program, which is the unmanned. Students are able to get their part 107 as well as their USI certification. So, but we've, we've also been kind of been around for 15 years. This is 15 years for this, for this particular branch. Um, and so we're, we're a little bit further ahead, I think, as far as the, the evolution goes um, and the programs. But he also has, at the Winter Haven, has several uh, programs that they have get going now, too. If I could just want to clarify, because we talk Lakeland, we talk Kathleen. Yes, so sorry, the, the sorry. The name of the school yes. district is Kathleen, <laughs> named after a town nearby, right? Well, Kathleen High School is Kathleen. the school that we are associated with. Oh, that's with. you're associated Correct. with. Yes. But it's actually within the confines of Correct. Lakeland. Correct. Okay, it's in good. the city of Lakeland, yes. Okay, all right, good. Mm -hmm. Winter Haven's a little bit simpler. Everything's all within Winter Haven. Haven. <laughs> Winter Haven. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but Winter Haven has an airport Winter as well. Winter Haven. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Winter Haven has and so five pathways for students at at the... Uh, Lakeland one and what do we have? At so we're, at we're obviously like she said we're a little bit younger um, uh, definitely a newer school so we're in our fifth year of existence right now so right now we are still just a aviation pathway um, with uh, keep people being able to concentrate in drones if they would like uh, as they get a little bit on up they could do their part 107 license and things like that um, we don't currently have the facilities needed to do maintenance and avionics and that sort of stuff that's something that we're working on, uh, something that's coming, but mm -hmm. we do uh, have some plans for the upcoming year we're excited about. We're going to partner with an airline to uh, look at doing what we call micro units, uh, where we're going to introduce our seniors to different aspects of aviation um, that may not necessarily be a pathway, but it's an opportunity for them to see uh, different jobs. And one of those is going to be flight attendant, which we are really excited about. Um, you know, the, the, we've got a lot of uh, students in our school that would say, you know, I don't necessarily want to be a pilot, but 
I would love to go be a flight attendant. And that's not something that we've ever seen offered anywhere else. Uh, so we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to look at dispatch. Uh, we're going to look at crew scheduling. Um, and, and we're going to continue to look at uh, you know, drones and small uh, introductory to maintenance uh, that we can do until we grow a little bit bigger. How wonderful mm -hmm. opening up quite a few additional pathways to, Absolutely. to people Absolutely. in aviation, not yes, just focused only on piloting, yes, which is because there's a lot of more to aviation than just piloting, particularly yes, in commercial airlines. You got to have all of those to make everything everything work. That's that's great. Absolutely, and and you know what we hear from the airlines is that they need as many, uh, you know, back of the house crew members as they do front of the you know flight deck crew members yeah. uh, over in the upcoming years. So yeah. I know they are very excited about us uh, beginning to introduce just even introductory flight attendant type stuff. Well, wow, that's pretty so good. We're excited about yeah, that. Yeah, we hear a lot about pilot shortage, or at least in the past few years, there's been quite a bit of talk about pilot shortage, but there is also an equally a serious shortage in mechanics and probably in flight attendants and the like. And so anything we can do to educate young people to get them start headed on a path to being successful in each of those areas is great. Mm -hmm. um, Jennifer, let me uh, focus back on what you said. One of the pathways um, at um, the Lakeland School mm -hmm. is uh, to pilot training. And, and so um, kids that um, choose that pathway, uh, they still have math and science and social studies and, and, and the like. What is this, like an extra course or two that they take uh, for ground training? And how does so that work? So the way that it works, and it actually is part of our partnership with the Aerospace Center for Excellence and Sun and Fun. One of the reasons for Sun and Fun is, as a, is kind of as a fundraiser for those educational programs. And so through the James Ray Foundation, our students and actually, and Brian's students in Winter Haven, any students here in all of Polk County, are, um, they're eligible to actually go and, and apply for the James Ray Scholarship. And that scholarship then takes care of the cost for their actual flight training. So while they're here at school, we mainly focus on it, on the, the written part of the exam, if you will. It's kind of like a driver's license, same thing. So you have your written and then you have your actual driving, you know, the driving test. And so we prepare them for the written portion of that test. And then they can go out and uh, and use those funds to actually go get their practical flight training. And it works for the, the student, like I said, the students in Winter Haven and anybody in Polk County. So, Excellent. Well, that's a great opportunity. So for audience at home, uh, James Ray is an incredible philanthrop philanthropist who has donated uh, millions of dollars towards scholarships for young people to um, get uh, flight training or aviation education and the like. Mm -hmm. and particularly uh, here in Central Florida where he's mm -hmm. been uh, just great uh, and very generous with uh, with scholarships, but they, they're happened all over the, the world. All right, so the pilot training then that a student gets is after school hours, I imagine, not during the, during the school. Correct, and that's how it is for, for you as well, right, Brian? Yeah, so, you know, any of the kids that get it, again, the, the in-school portion is like saying, I'm going to ground school. Right, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I've got to be able to pass that knowledge test, and and that's what we're able to do in the classrooms. Um, they're not flying during classroom hours, uh, but the scholarship, and then it's one of the major major benefits of of the uniqueness of being on the airport. Yeah, uh, you know, I know for her students and mine as well. Mine literally can walk about 200 feet, and they are at the local flight school. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, they're able to go get ground in, in class, and and then school gets out, and they walk across the parking lot and go jump in a plane and, and go take a flight lesson. It's just really, really convenient for the kids and, and uh, you know, super encouraging for them to be able to get that done. Wonderful. So your academy, Brian, is at the Winter Haven Airport? Yes, sir. Okay, and you're obviously at the mm -hmm. Lakeland Airport, but are there any flight schools over in this side of the airport? Oh, yes. There's there there's several that are okay. within within a, a close Close, close, close enough. Yeah, okay, that's good. <laughs> All right, good. And so um, talk about throughput. So... Um, how long have you been here, Jennifer? This is, I have been here four years as the administrator. Okay. And how many uh, students have gone all the way through pilot training? Do you oh, have wow. an idea? Oh, wow. I mean, it's typically, oh, uh, we get asked this a lot, but it's, it's, it's a tough number because it's generally okay. about 25 a year are reaching that point where they are completing their solo flight. Now are generally these seniors in high school? or are they uh, No, not always. I mean, we have them as young as 
um, as young as sophomores or juniors. So, I mean, it just depends on what previous in, uh, instruction they've had and experiences that they've had. Obviously, there's age requirements sure. for, you know, for, for getting your license. But so. some of them may have a pilot's license before they have a driver's oh, license. Oh, 100%. Yes. <laughs> yes. How exciting that happens is that? a lot, actually. Yeah. yeah it's kind of scary. Well, maybe. Although you can't hit a lot <laughs> in the air, I guess. Uh, <laughs> hopefully you don't. Hopefully you don't. <laughs> and uh, same way at um, Winter Haven? Yeah, I mean, my numbers are a little easier to remember because we're a lot newer, uh, and I still have them all in my head. So um, we've had just just this last month our, our 14th student uh, receive the James C. Ray Scholarship. Very and good. of those 14 right now, uh, we have a student next week that will take his check ride, and if he passes or when he passes, um, he will be our 10th pilot. 10th oh yeah, my goodness. out of the 14 and the other four are still in flight training so what a great success you know, they're working yeah. working towards that so yeah it's it's uh it's pretty amazing and a really good opportunity for these kids brian tell me about this um curriculum that leads to um, opportunities as a flight attendant is this something new that you've developed just at your school it's something that we are currently in production with um, there's an airline that we're working with uh, currently that we want to implement it come august so we have not put it in place yet uh, we will be uh, a beta test, basically, for uh, something that they would love to roll out, you know, nationwide uh, eventually in, in these schools that, you know, have the, the interest to do that. So um, they're in the development of a curriculum for it, uh, and, and we are certainly uh, willing and able to uh, give them a platform to, to put that curriculum into place. And we'll probably spend about a nine-week period, you know, a quarter of the year for their senior year, um, putting them through this initial training and for me I think it's something that you know every student will go through as a senior there, there's absolutely benefit for somebody that wants to sit in the front to know what the people sitting in the back are doing yeah uh, mm -hmm. you know so we see benefit across the board uh, for the kids that want to do that as a career and the kids that are just going to be in aviation uh, the more you know the harder you are to fire is the way I see it <laughs> well put <laughs> no. well put so tell me about uh, someone who has uh, their sights set on being a flight attendant for a major airline going through your curriculum when they finish that, I know it's still in development or right, being right. refined, but when they finish that, would they have an edge in getting a flight? Of, a yeah, I mean, I think position? absolutely. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a, a certification that goes along with it. They're not going to get some stamp of approval from the state that says you're, you know, this. But uh, I, I think certainly uh, as far as a pipeline goes, um, if you can show that you have been through curriculum of introductory to flight uh, you know, being a flight attendant type stuff, you know, why would you not be at the top of the pile as far as an applicant exactly. goes? Exactly. So being you know, hired then would be hopefully a lot easier. Certainly. You still they, have to go through the training at that specific airline. Right. You'll go through equipment. the training at that airline. But, procedures. You know, I mean, and specifically the airline that we're working with, you know, if you're going to implement this in our school and then I turn around and send you kids, you, you know, you, they took your training. So mm -hmm. that's uh it's a win-win. You know, it's a win-win for them and for us, and and you know, hopefully, uh, you know, as this grows, more people will jump on board, and and uh, you know, I'd love to be a pipeline to all kinds of people for for this type of thing. That really, I don't know if it's offered anywhere. Um, I can so. imagine not. Um, so, uh, Jennifer, how about the, those uh, young men and women who are uh, interested in um, AMT, aviation mechanic? Uh, technicians yes. uh, what, what do they do do they do ground school training at the at the Academy so our students who are studying for that program uh, they typically will work through the first part of that because uh, you know there's a there's a kind of a sequence they go through they do the general portion of the air a and p and then they had to do the airframe and then the power plant um, so our students our focus here is to get them through at least the general portion uh, and generally, they can start with some of the airframe, start going right before they graduate as well, but definitely getting them through the general. Now, the great thing is, is that we have a partnership with Travis Technical College, which is also located here on the grounds of Sun and Fun. So they have a satellite uh, classroom here on the grounds of Sun and Fun. And so our students are able to then leave here with the hours that they've accrued, the time that they put in, and then they're able to already kind of have a leg up and be finished with part of the program so that 
uh, once they go over to the Travis Technical Center, they really only have about a year left and then they're able to get that certification. And the move to Travis would be after they get their high after school diploma? After high school, correct. Okay, so that's the follow-on mm -hmm. thing. That's but it's, their post-secondary. It's like a super vocational school and it's located right here. It'd just be a simple correct. transition from one to the other. Very How easy. How good is that? You've really, uh, you've really um, made the mm -hmm. pipeline easy for the, mm -hmm. for the kids and, and the like. And so, um, 370 some students you said right now mm -hmm. has that steadily grown through the years or has it been it has 300? it has it started um, they were probably they started with about 40 to 50 students about 150 years ago or sorry 150 years ago <laughs> <laughs> 15 years ago how's that sound okay um, and then we have we have slowly uh, increased those numbers okay mm -hmm. good and uh, you said you're at uh, 230 right now, About 230, uh, and you know, five years ago when we started, we're in our fifth year, so I'm only with my second graduating class uh, this year. Um, we've went from about 140 to almost 100 more than that, about 240. Wow. And I'm anticipating that we'll be very close to 300 this next year. So for a student uh, graduated from eighth grade that has an idea of wanting to go to the, one of these uh, academies, do they have to apply and get it approved, or selected, or what's the process? Or do they just show up in s September? Yes and no. If they are already zoned for either Kathleen High School or Winter Haven High School, then they do not have to apply to the program. They simply let their counselor know that these are the elective courses I want to do. If they are not zoned for Kathleen High School or Winter Haven High School, they're able to apply during the open enrollment period, which is January through February. Okay. Mm -hmm. Zone meaning geographically zoned Correct. for the high school. Correct. Area. Where you would typically be you know, assigned to go to school. Yeah. But if a student doesn't want to pursue something in aviation, there are other high schools Correct. within their zone? Mm -hmm. Okay, so they, it's a choice that they make, and if they're zoned locally, then there's really nothing they have to do to right. get, get approved. Right, they don't have That's to great. do anything to be approved. Correct. Okay, well, great. Well, tell me a little bit about, yeah, I mean, you told us a lot about the, the academies. Uh, I wanted to get to know a little bit more about you. Jennifer, how long have you been in education? <laughs> oh, Lordy. Well, I know um, all your life. Okay. But, but, uh, but, this is year 27. Wow. Mm hmm. Year what a 27. Dedication. Thank you for what you do for our kids. Yes, yes. I actually started out, I was an English teacher, and I know the students are like, wait, you're not a pilot? And I'm like, no, but I'm glad you are, and I'm glad that you want to be, and that's what my job is, is to help you get to be what you want to be. <laughs> so, yes, I was well an English put. teacher. In fact, I actually taught here at CFAA for a few years, and then I went on and became an administrator at a middle school and then came back. Uh huh. Very good. Mm -hmm. And so you're back in the administrator position yes, now, as yes. opposed to the teacher position. Correct. So do you miss teaching? Oh, every day. Yeah, sure. Every day. <laughs> but somebody's got to be the administrator. Every day. I loved being there with the kids, but now I get to see more of the kids. I'm sure. Yes. I'm sure. And Brian, how about you? How long have you been in education? I am in year 17, so I'm a little bit behind her. She gets to retire <laughs> before I do. Yay. Um, but I spent my first decade basically as a uh, as a dean. Uh, dealing with you know discipline and things like that around the school um, and then you know just by chance this this program at my high school popped up and I knew it was absolutely something that I wanted to take and I wanted to run with so for the last four years I've been um, the teacher in the classroom uh, and then this year the way that it worked out when we moved to the airport full-time uh, we needed an administrator over the program um, and I had experience in administration, so it was just a natural uh, sort of progression for me to stay in charge and, and take it over as the admin. So I've moved back out of the classroom as the, the head of program. Wow, well, very good. Well, thank you both for your dedication to the education of our country's children. It's just amazing uh, all the important work that you do for our kids who will be tomorrow's, well, are tomorrow's leaders actually already. And, and, uh, those that are looking forward to a path uh, in aviation, this is just a wonderful experience for them, and you have a lot to do with it, and as long with other, as long, as well as other staff members of yours, I'm sure that are that are helping with this. Good. So you've had some good success rate. Uh, the James C. Scholarship um, helps with uh, the education, at least the pilot training and the, and the like. And uh, so, how many have gone on into careers in aviation, come back and talked to you and told you about their experience? Any stories there that you want to sh share? Uh. Go ahead. You yeah, have I mean, that, that's, <laughs> again, I'm only in my second graduating right. class, so, yeah. you, you know, there's there's kids that are a lot further ahead with, with her school than mine, but, you know, um, we had an event last night where we talked to some of the kids that have graduated. I got one that's going to go 
Uh, he's doing nuclear propulsion in the Navy. Uh, he's going to commission as an officer. We've got several that are going to the Air Force. We've got some that have went on there working at Jack Brown Seaplane Base to become a, a, a uh, you know seaplane mechanic. Um, you know, so there's just there's I'm a lot excited. of success stories already. We're yeah. not quite as far out with kids yeah. that have spent ten years getting into the industry as, as she might be, but uh, certainly the success stories are already happening Wonderful. left and right. Well, thank you so much for sharing, Brian and Jennifer. This is great. Our our time is up already. I thought it was going to take a while, but man, it just has <laughs> flown by, and it's been so interesting learning uh, what each of you have done in your respective academies you. and how you're making a big uh, big change here. For the Florida Aviation Network, I'm Ron Timmermans one of the many hosts, and thank you for joining us. Please stay tuned because there are more interviews to follow. We'll be back with you shortly.